case you couldn't tell by the overly descriptive subtitle, the G stands for gravity. Low G Man was created by Kid, who were responsible for tons of hidden gems on the NES like Kickmaster, the G.I. Joe games, and Mendel Palace. How does Low G Man compare to those classics? Let's find out. To start with, the story is way too good. It was a robot producing exploration planet like any other. Large cities, beautiful sunsets, but then they came. Let's send in Low G Man. That's the entire intro, short and sweet. One, the idea that a robot producing exploration planet renowned for its large cities and beautiful sunsets is a common thing in this universe is pretty awesome. Two, the they being described here is this white faced sleeping goblin bot guy camouflaged into the background. Yikes! Damn right you need to send low G-Man. That motherfucker looks terrifying. You've got a gun, which stuns robots, and then a spear, which can kill them. You can only use the spear up or down, like the thrust move in Zelda 2. It's a little awkward because the spear thrust moves down and forward instead of straight down, and I find that most of the time when I'm trying to attack something, I miss it completely. Your character's name is not a misnomer either. He does jump like his spring shoes have rockets attached. I'm not entirely sure that this massive leap is useful per se, but I guess it's better than a pathetic high G hop. Got several weapons to cycle through, all of which use ammo like in Sunsoft's Batman, and you can jump into these large robotic vehicles like in Sunsoft's Blaster Master. Low G Man isn't a ripoff of either by any means, but the similarities are there for sure. The music is rad, up there with similar titles like Shatterhand or Journey to Silius, and the graphics and sprite work are decent, but maybe not on the same level as the aforementioned games. The control is a little clunky, and it's not just the awkward attack. The jumping is a little too much, and you mostly find yourself missing your target by huge margins. Those two things, coupled with a questionable hit detection, make hitting enemies way harder than it should be, which in turn makes the difficulty way harder than it should be. The biggest issue for me is that it's not entirely clear what you're supposed to do, especially when it comes to the boss fights. You know how in every game of this era, it's really obvious which part of the boss is its weak spot? Knowing this doesn't necessarily make the fight any easier, but it does make your objective clear. In low G-Man, you think you know what to attack, but then either you can't tell if you're hurting it, or you don't know if you're using the right weapon. Some bosses can only be hurt by the gun, and others by the spear. It's a lot of unnecessary trial and error, and even when you figure it out, it's still mighty frustrating. This boss here, for instance, took me 10 lives to figure out what the hell I was supposed to do. I figure I need to jump on these platforms, but wait, they hurt me? Okay, well, maybe I'll freeze them with a gun. Well, that kind of works, but it's so difficult to line these things up in a way where you can actually jump up from them. All the while, they intermittently come back to life, while these unkillable bubbles endlessly shower you. When you do finally make it to the top, obviously you're supposed to attack this metal head, right? Well, can you tell if I'm hurting it or not? Just like a quick blinking animation here would make this game infinitely more fun to play, and a consistent strategy of you have to shoot it before stabbing it would make deciphering these mysteries way more straightforward and fun. And if not for the obtuse puzzles that are these boss fights, this game would be ridiculously easy. Most of the time you can avoid every enemy on the screen and just bounce around from one identical platform to the next until you get to the end of the stage. It's incredibly monotonous, punctuated even more by the fact that when you're killed by the boss, you have to start the level over again, which means more mind-numbing, low-gravity leaping before you get back to the main fight. It's a real drag, and that's probably the best word to describe this game. It just drags on and on and on. And that's all I can really say about Low G Man. It's fine, totally playable, but repetitive and frustrating. Considering how many great action platformers were released for the NES, there's no one in their right mind who'd rather play this over, say, Mega Man, or Power Blade, or Shatterhand, or Bionic Commando, or Metal Storm, or...